Well, hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha TV's coverage of the FIFA World Cup. I'm your host, Frank Rausen Pereira. We'll take you through the matches to take place during the course of the day today. We'll also review the matches that took place uh, yesterday. We are joined by a special guest in our studio today. We have Jyoti Bharat, former uh, Indian striker. And also joining us, as always, is Shekhar Lutra, sports editor of the DNA. Thank you to both of you for joining me on the program. Thank you very much. What a game, what a day it was uh, yesterday. Ten goals were scored in all and uh, it was a day for the strikers. We'll talk about that in just a bit. But before that, Portugal will take on Morocco in their next World Cup match today. It is a crucial game for both the sides to remain uh, in the tournament. A defeat for either may effectively throw a spanner in their chances to advance to the next round. While Portugal held on to a draw against Spain in their first game, Morocco was defeated by Iran in their opening game of Group B. Cristiano Ronaldo and the rest of the Portugal World Cup squad trained hard on Tuesday ahead of their Group B clash with Morocco. Ronaldo, the world's best player, was superb in Portugal's 3-3 draw with Spain last week. Perhaps the only player who looked like he troubled the Spanish Armada, who were equally superb and looked good to upset Portugal in their World Cup opening game. His three goals against Spain made him the oldest man to score a hat-trick in the World Cup Finals and only the fourth to net in four consecutive global showpiece tournaments. For Morocco, this will be a crucial game. The least they need to do is hold Portugal to a draw to survive in the tournament. A defeat in this game will effectively end their campaign, which began with a 1-0 loss to Iran in their opening game last week. No, it's true. We've seen his first match against Spain. He's made a great match. It's a day to respect. Faut pas trop non plus le respecter sur le terrain parce que c'est un joueur comme. Morocco's only victory against Portugal came in the 1986 World Cup when they had defeated the European side 3-1 in the group stage. Portugal is currently locked with Spain on a point each in Group B, which is led by Iran with three points, while Morocco is yet to open its account. Vaibhav Raj Shukla's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Well, before I go to my guests and talk about what's likely to happen in this match between Portugal and Morocco, let's take a look at the possible lineups for this particular match. Let's look at uh, Portugal first, of course. Patricio, Cedric, Pepe, Fonte, Guerrero, Carvalho, Moutinho, Mario, Silva, Guedes, and Ronaldo. This is the possible lineup, of course. All experienced players, several of them playing in some of the biggest leagues and biggest clubs in uh, the uh, in Europe, of course. Let's look at uh, Morocco's uh, starting lineup as well, if we can, of course. Morocco, Mohamedi, Amrabat, uh, Benesha, Saiz, Ben Charki, El Emadi, Belhanda, Harit, Bausafa, Ziyech, and El Khabi. Jyoti, Portugal versus Morocco. Well, on paper, Portugal is going to win this match if you look at how strong they are on paper. But what do you think is likely to happen? Do you think Morocco can spring a surprise? Well, I think uh, Morocco surprised me with their first game. The way they defended against Iran and that unlucky goal late in that game. Um, they looked solid at the back. And I feel that they're gonna, if they play their best today, uh, Portugal might run into a bit of trouble up front. But, um, you know, given their experience, I expect them to score. Yeah, you know, Portugal, uh, Shekhar, star-studded oh, team. Yes. Are they one of your favourites to go on to the semi-finals? Maybe not oh, the yes. final or the... I think uh, we only have to talk till semi-finals. And I think uh, top four or five teams, and definitely Portugal is one of them. And, and don't forget, 
even if he has become the oldest star to, to score a hat-trick. But despite that, I think fitness level uh, of Ronaldo is, is comparable to anybody else in the world. And we have seen that, his fitness, his overall, you know, that uh, when he speeds up uh, from the midfield, I think that's been remarkable. And talking about Ronaldo, it's very difficult to stop him. We have seen that the best defense in the world is probably Italian or, or the Spanish. And we have seen what happened that night when Ronaldo was, he got three chances, probably three and a half chances in the entire match, and he scored three. Let's, so let's the, find out from the striker, oh yes. you know, that's, that's the prowess of a striker, oh isn't yes. it? Uh, isn't it, Jyoti? I mean, the chances you get, you need to convert them. Accuracy rate needs to be, you know, great. Of course, and Ronaldo, I mean, you don't get them any better. And, um, well, he's up against, um, he's played the best defenders in the world and he's still come out on top. So I can see him, uh, you know, scoring again today and uh, making a mark on this game. Another thing, I think the change in the entire attitude of this uh, uh, Portuguese team is, uh, till the last World Cup, if you remember, they never used to feed, you know, Ronaldo. That but they are reigning European because, champions. And right, and, and no, no, after that, what happened in the last two years, they have actually discovered that without feeding him, because there is so much of individual brilliance even in, in that team. Pepe, if you look at him, he's a deep def defender. Right. But he comes up so occasionally, you know, so, uh, so oftenly that, uh, you know, it's difficult to even stop him, you know, at, at times. So I think what has happened in the last two years, that's why this, is, this team looks like a champion team. Because they are, they are relying more on Ronaldo and Ronaldo's accuracy is about more than I think 50% at, at, at any level. Sure, and let's look at uh, the formation of Morocco as well. 4-1-4-1 formation is what Morocco is likely to go ahead with, of course. Uh, and if you look at, if you compare it uh, to Portugal, it's a 4-3-2-1 kind of a formation. And, uh, you know, as far as the formations are concerned, uh, uh, Jyoti, you know, how, how easy or difficult is it to adapt to, the, to a different kind of a formation as well, as a player? Well, it takes time, uh, but I'm sure these guys have done this in practice. Uh, they've played a lot of friendlies leading up to this World Cup. I'm sure they've worked with different formations. Uh, today, it looks like a defensive formation for Morocco. Um, but, you know, they are up against such a, such a quality strike uh, side, so... Very quickly, scoreline for you? I would say 2-0. 2-0 Portugal? Yes. Or Morocco? 2-0 Portugal. <laughs> Shekhar? I think it has to be, you know, because you have to understand the, the dynamics of this group. Uh, Portugal has to score more because Iran is So what's is the scoreline? What? I think it has to be 3-1, 3-0, that kind of score. 3-1, 3-0. They okay. have to score. Big. Goals will galore oh, basically yes. as far as this and match don't is forget, concerned. This team is going to play the, the win. I mean, whosoever will be the second is likely to play the Russia, which would be the most difficult under any circumstances. 60,000, 80,000 crowd. So every team would like to avoid Russia at this stage. Okay. Russians have been in superb form thus far in the tournament and Shaker is suggesting that Portugal or Spain would like to not face them in the next round. Okay, moving on now, of course, Spain takes on Iran in their next group stage game, a match they need to win to earn its first winning point in a tricky looking group B, which is stopped by Iran, which has three points. It will also be a first ever World Cup meeting between the two sides. The problem for Spain remains with the 30-yard box, for they have conceded 10 goals in their last four World Cup matches. Spain will face Iran in their second World Cup group game at the Kazan Arena today. The 2010 world champions were eliminated in the group stage in their 2014 World Cup campaign. Spain was topped at a 3-3 draw by Portugal after a marvellous hat-trick by Cristiano Ronaldo, who kept testing their defence line throughout the game. In good news for Spanish coach Fernando Hierro, all players are available given their fitness. Though he is yet to decide if defender Dani Carvajal will be a part of the playing 11. Carvajal had just recovered from a hamstring injury sustained during Real Madrid's 3-1 victory over Liverpool in the Champions League final. Iran is a solid solido a nivel defensivo, offensivo, tiene los conceptos y, y las ideas muy claras. 
Sabes un equipo que encaja poco. É, por esse preço, um milhão e meio, acho que era barato, né? Comprávamos já. Né? <risos> Apesar de não termos, termos dificuldades económicas, a gente tentava. <risos> Sergio Ramos' side will once again be looking at Diego Costa, who netted two brilliant goals against Portugal. Their worry, however, remains with the glove man, David De Gea, who had conceded three goals and will be playing only the second World Cup game of his career. Spain is currently locked with Portugal on a point each in Group B, which is led by Iran. Raj Yadav's report for Rajya Sabha TV. Well, let's look at the possible uh, lineups as far as Spain and uh, their opponents are concerned. Iran, of course, Spain uh, right now. Uh, David Agea, uh, Danny Carvajal, Gerard Pique, Sergio Ramos, Jordi Alba, Sergio Busquets, Koke, Andres uh, Iniesta, David Silva, Isco, and Diego Costa. Uh, all great names on paper, of course. Let's take a look at the other team as well. We have Iran. Uh, Byron Wand. Uh, Haji Safi, Cheshmi, uh, Razayan, Shojei Ibrahimi, Amiri, Ansari Fard, and uh, Azmoon. These are the players as far as Iran is concerned. Uh, let me go across to my guests now. Uh, you know, Jyoti, Spain on paper looks incredible. Uh, they won the World Cup in the recent past. The last minute change as far as the coach is concerned, how much of a factor do you think it's going to be for the players? on the pitch? Well, look, these are world-class players and um, of course, a uh, change in coach so late, uh, close to the World Cup, could, you know, have a bit of an effect on the, the team dynamics, but these are professional players. I'm sure they already know what they have to do out there and uh, with Her uh, Herrero coming in, I'm sure, uh, you know, he's been there, he's done it all and I'm sure these players know him well and I don't think it'll be a big problem for them to adapt to him. If there is a problem, Maria Shaker, as far as Spain is concerned, it has to be their defence. You know, world-class defenders, oh, yes. but they have let in goals. But, you know, you have to understand, it's not the same golden generation. It's, uh, they are past their prime. Iniesta, we saw in the last game, he was not looking in his prime, definitely. PK is definitely a yard slower than what he used to be, you know. So, the, the good thing is that Costa is in great form. He looks to be, you know, in, in dynamic form. So, but overall, you can't say that Spain is one team which can be taken lightly by anybody. This is a team which can again win a World Cup at any moment. But the point is, is it the same kind of 11 which are playing? Definitely no. They, this, is a sec this is a side which is probably trying to bring in young blood, but due to the compulsions or the star studiedness of which we have seen in Indian cricket also, they are not letting go their, you know, the old days. So probably sure. that's been a problem you with know, the speed. You know, is it safe to say whatever happens today that we are going to see a new topper as far as this group is concerned, oh, that Josie? <laughs> that's, uh, I mean, that's the million dollar question with this group. Um, it's going to be very interesting. Today's games are going to be a huge factor. Um, I think the standout player for me in Spain's last game was Isco. Uh, he seemed very creative. Yes. Um, he was everywhere on the field and I feel he might be uh, the difference today. And today. what about the captain, Sergio Ramos? Take her. Ramos definitely is the, the best experienced player and, and the best creator also on the field. But the, again, the point is, even if Spain wins or, or you know, Portugal wins, Still, Iran has a chance to top the, the group. And, and, but Iran is on the back foot in the sense they have to draw somewhere, you know, today's game. If they can't, then obviously they'll be playing the toughest again game in the next round. Sure. Whereas, Scoreline score okay. for you as far as this match is concerned? But Spain, I think definitely it has to be 2-0. If maximum Iran could do is to get one goal against Okay. 2-0 or 2-1? Jyoti? I would say 3-1 today. 3-1 to in favour of Spain. Okay, all right, moving on. Today's second match will be between Uruguay and Saudi Arabia. This will be the third encounter between Uruguay and Saudi Arabia and the first at a World Cup. Uruguay has won the FIFA World Cup twice, including the first World Cup in 1930 as hosts. They won their second title in 1950, upsetting host Brazil in the final match. In Russia, they are out to reach the knockout stage of the third straight 
edition. Oscar Tabarez's uh, side may have made heavy weather of upcoming Egypt, but they showed that their competitive streak and winning mentality remain well intact. Saudi Arabia, on the other hand, are seeking their first win at the FIFA World Cup in 24 years. They last won a match at the World Stage in 1994. However, it is one of Asia's most successful teams, having won the Asian Cup Championship thrice. The Green Falcons began this edition with a loss to host Russia. Let's take a look at the lineup. Lineup now, as far as uh, Uruguay is uh, concerned, uh, we have uh, uh, Fernando Muslera, uh, Valera, Jimenez, Godin, Caseras, Nandez, Vecino, Bent, uh, Betancourt, Rodriguez, Suarez, and Cavani. Saudi Arabia, of course, is uh, playing a side whose players all play only in the South, only Saudi club football, of course, they don't play outside of uh, Saudi Arabia and that could be a factor as far as uh, uh, their team is concerned in this particular World Cup. Important match shaker as far as Uruguay is concerned oh, because they have, uh, to, they have to win this match. They have to seal this, you know, uh, the progress. If they don't today, they'll be up against you know, Russia in the next. So that could be a factor in, in progressing to the next round. But if they but win the match, the group is sealed. Yeah, the group is then sealed. And probably, you know, I just feel, you know, a bit sad for uh, Salah and Egypt because that was a very talented team, but they, unfortunately, they could not do much. But for Saudi Arabia, even if they, have, they don't play outside their country, but Saudi Arabia is one country where they host almost all the top teams in the world. That's a different matter that when you play friendlies, then obviously you don't get 100% of what Argentinians or, or Brazilians do. But still, they have exposure to the highest level. But in the last match, they were, they were shattered. They were completely out of, you know, what was happened, what has happened to them. So they have to regroup again. You know, uh, Uruguay, they have a star-studded team. They have several players playing in some of the top clubs in the world. Would you call them your dark horse as far as this tournament is concerned? Well, l looking at their lineup, they are not a young team, I would say. They are, I would say, average age of 29, 30. So they have a lot of experience under their belt. And all of them are playing in top sides in Europe. Um, they've got two amazing strikers. Cavani is one of them. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and Luis Suarez is the other. And, and still, uh, uh, I mean, uh, there are a couple of in the bench who can still replace them and come there, you know, because this team is one team which is after, I think, maybe Spanish team, probably, or the Brazilian. I think this is the most, most trusted team. Scoreline for you? I think this should be 3-0, 4-0, 4-1, 5-1. Anything could happen because Suarez is there. Don't forget. Hat-trick from Suarez is, <laughs> is what Shaker is going towards. Jyoti? Definitely high scoring. High I would say yeah. 4-1, 4-0, for sure. So definitely the strikers are the two, they, they hunt in pairs and uh, they've got a great pair there as far as Uruguay is concerned. So we need to watch out for Cavani and Suarez. On that note, we'll slip into a short break. We'll review the matches of last night on the other side. Stay tuned, we'll be right back.